Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video on the deck list from the top 16 of ARG Springfield that has literally just ended its day one play uh, at the time of me making this video. Now, the duelists have to come back for day two to play out the top 16 cut, but as I said, if you watched the Blue Eyes Kaiju deck profile video that went up a little bit before this one, if you, uh, if you watched that video, you would have remembered, hopefully, that there were only two deck lists out of the top 16 that did not contain Zodiac cards in them. One of them being this DDD deck, and the other being the Blue Eyes Kaiju deck that I already put a profile up on my channel of. So, if you're interested in not playing Zodiac cards, I mean, you should definitely be looking at these as a little bit of information to gather, you know, so that you can actually start looking at, you know, a little bit more of a way that people are orienting their deck lists to not have to play Zoo cards and stuff like that because there is definitely a way that you can play without playing Zodiac Beast cards and be part of Team No Zoo as, uh, as Nadir over at Glasgow Yu-Gi-Oh decides to uh, call it. But um, overall you basically have to change the way you build your decks in certain aspects in order to supplement the weakness that your deck has to the potentials of Drancia as well as the like incredible efficient play that Zodiac Beasts offer literally any deck that they are put in. But anyway, this is the DDD deck that got, I, uh, I don't even know what place, I think it was like 14th place out of top 16, and I can't even remember the person's name who piloted it, but it will definitely be in the title of the video. Um, but yeah, this was like 13 or 14th place after Swiss, and I honestly hope it goes a little bit farther than that. I hope it goes further than the top 16, but anyway, the deck list is 3. Oblivion King Abyss Ragnarok, 3, Savant Thomas, 3, Savant Copernicus, 3, Savant Kepler, 1 DD Orthros, 3 DD Swirl Slime, 3 Necro Slime, 3 Lamia, 2 Max C, and 1 DD Crow as hand traps. And then for spells, there's 3 copies of Dark Contract with the Gate and 2 copies of Dark Contract with the Swamp King. Most people usually opt to play 1, but if you do open with the second copy of it, it is a technically a starter card, so. I mean, it can help you unbreak hands, so I guess there is value in playing it, as well as you don't really want to banish it off the three copies of Desires that you are running and not have access to it for the rest of the game. So there is that little bit of information, a little bit of like situational like awareness about the card, but I honestly think that two is probably a little bit too much, just from my own personal experience. But anyway, three Allure alongside three Desires, two copy of Twin Twister, one Soul Charge, one one for one, and the main deck Raigeki for you know just a solid going second card against potential zoo boards and stuff like that. And then for the traps that he played, he main decked Emptiness, one Dimensional Barrier, one Dark Contract with the Witch, and one copy of Macro Cosmos in his 45 card main deck. So, a little bit of an odd choice in Macro, but I definitely see the uh, the sort of thing he was trying to go for. He's like, set up Macro against the Zoo stuff, and you can actually banish Rat Pierres and stuff, and you can also flip it against the Infernoid deck and basically just hopefully auto win that matchup. But anyway, for the extra deck, one Formula Synchron, one Black Rose Dragon, one DD Gust King Alexander, one Stardust Spark Dragon, one Cypher and Lord Omega, one DDD Cursed King Siegfried, one Crimson Blader, one Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, and one Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier. And then for the fusions, he played two copies of Genghis, one copy of Oracle King to Arc, and one Dragon Pain King Wolf Beowulf, uh, and then uh, one Titanic Galaxy, and one DDD Kaliuga are for his only Xyz monsters, so he's not opting to play anything like Beatrice or anything like that to be a combo extender. Now his side deck is a bit interesting, there's a ton of monsters in here, and uh, it's it's really odd, like the, the kaiju things I see in here as well, but anyway, a second DD Crows in his side deck, two Dinko Sekas for obviously like track decks, trap decks and stuff like that, three Artifact Lancia for the Infernoid matchup, and then there's one of each kaiju in the form of one Gamma Seal, one Cumungus, and one Godarla. Um, I don't know what the what the benefit of playing the different names are, other than the fact that he could draw multiples and be able to special the weakest one to his opponent's side of the board, and then special like one of the other or bigger ones to his board. Uh, but otherwise, I don't know what the uh, what the main like benefit over not just playing three Gamma Seal is, other than just like if you draw multiples, you can you can you can give yourself the bigger one. Especially since he's not playing Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, but anyway, continuing on, one Twin Twister for the full playset is in his side deck, two Dark Holes for more board wipes, and then three copies of Magical Spring are the last three cards in his side deck. So overall, this is kind of a standard clear-cut DDD list, but you honestly just have to do a little bit of minor changing. I mean, honestly, this deck is probably the deck list that changed the, li the least in terms of uh, how it has to operate to play against Zoo. Um, mainly the thing that you have to worry about is you just have to be able to answer boards with Drancia and traps because this deck is very, very bad at playing through like multiple traps and something like a Dryden. But uh, overall, it's definitely something that can be done 
if you want to take this deck to an event. Um, it's very, very just reliant on you making your plays establish themselves, and so that's going to be the big like detractor from any sort of play lines you're going to be doing for your tournament if you decide to play this deck with you know the zoo format being upon us. But ultimately, it is still very possible. This is a very strong contender for a deck that you can play, but ultimately it's just not as consistent of an option as something like Zoo would be. But this is still an option you can have, and you can also multi you can modify this a few different ways, like putting Kaijus in the main deck and stuff like that to make the deck stronger against Zoo decks. Uh, but that's just uh, that's just a little bit of things that could just be done as the format progresses to improve your position against the matchup. But anyway, like I said, this was one of two Zoo decks or two decks that didn't have Zoo cards in them for the top of ARG Springfield 2017, and so I just felt like sharing these above all else because you can never have too much information if you are looking to build your deck and go to a regional or go to a YCS level event like Seattle or Atlanta, which are literally right around the corner for, for the country and all that sort of stuff. You can never have too much information if you're, even if you're looking to build a deck for a local, you can never have too much information if you're trying to improve your game. So that's honestly why I'm doing these videos, is trying to spread information about how these decks are being built and what they are trying to do to not lose to Zoo. But other than that, thanks for watching, thanks for your time. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about this deck, about the ARG Circuit Series in general, whether you think that they're relevant or not or whatever. I think that the large constant, even though they're small events, the large concentration of good players that do go to them makes them a good like information pool of like a source of information to get stuff from. Um, so there is that's my personal opinion on the matter. But if you have your own opinion, definitely share it down below. I'd love to read it and pro possibly debate it with you, maybe. But anyway, other than that, if you want to support me, you could throw the li uh, like on the video. I cannot speak for some reason. You can like this video, subscribe if you already haven't, and if you know some people that might also like my content, definitely share my videos around and maybe encourage them to subscribe as well. Helping the channel grow is a great way to show your support. But other than that, if you want to support me directly, you can definitely go check out my Patreon page where there's a link to that in the description of the video as well as on the video itself. And if you want to support me directly, you can definitely check that out as well as potentially get in on some monthly giveaways I'm going to be doing of Konami product that is coming out per month. So this month I'm going to be trying to give away a box of Raging Tempest as well as possibly another box of Fusion Enforcers. Uh, so that will be something that's going on at the end of the month, hopefully, uh, depending on how well things go. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. As I've already said, thanks for your time as usual, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.